Thank you, Brother Reed. Good evening, friends. It's very happy to be here tonight again to minister in the name of our Lord Jesus. I am happy to say that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He, his great loving powers never fails. He's just the same as he, he always was. I trust that tonight will prove to be a blessing to many of the people who are without God, without Christ in the world, alienated, cut off. I trust that they'll come to Christ tonight and be saved and reconciled to God. And I trust it'll be a blessing for many who are sick and afflicted, that they might be made well. May our Lord grant that is my sincere prayer. Brother Reed does the speaking. First part of the week I was speaking myself. I was only intending to stay about three or four nights. It seemed like the Holy Spirit wanted me to stay just a little longer. I was preaching. I got just a little bit hoarse. Well, it usually accompanies along. It's such a... Something happens. You, It's in another world. You live in two worlds. There's no need of trying to explain it because you just can't explain it. You just have to believe it. God cannot be explained. He has to be just believed. And when we believe God, then that's by faith. We believe him and he heals us, saves us. And now tonight, Father, the people are standing, and Mr. Reed, our brother here, I was been sitting in the little room for a little while. I usually maybe try to come along about quarter of eight, something like that, 7.30, when they pick me up, come up and hear part of the service. And I would enjoy that singing. And brother Ryan, that... <laughs> <laughs> I trust that our Lord will let me be that nimble when I'm 73 years old, if I live to see it. I have known Brother Ryan for some time now, and I know that he is a humble Christian. When I first saw him, I wondered how would he wear that hair down to his shoulder, that long beard, why was that? You have to know Brother Ryan to know the reason. If you know him, well, then you'll know why. God only made one. That's him. No one else to take his place. Without the hair to his shoulders, and his, now someone says that's woman's hair. That doesn't buy a pace for you women unless say you got long hair when it's to your shoulder. Read the Greek on that. Look, Femish hair is way down. Hair at the shoulder was short hair. So... The man used to pull it around and cut it off. That was short hair. But women let theirs grow all the way down, way down. So that's the reason Jesus, his picture there shows that he didn't have long hair. Not by no means. He had short hair. But today we shore on up closer. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink or the wearing of apparel. It's long-suffering, goodness, meekness, patience, and the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God. So I want to read just a little scripture, and then I'm going to start the prayer line and pray for the sick. And now, if the Holy Spirit shall come into our presence tonight to bless us with his great August being, I trust that you that are unsaved will be saved, and you that are, are sick will be healed. If there be any wayward here, may you come back to God tonight. That's what the meaning of this, these meetings are. First thing is to get the people right with God in their heart. Amen. That's the first motive. Secondarily, is those wayfaring people might be healed. And then third is 
is to look for the glory of God, that the saints might be refreshed, watching, listening, looking on. Now, the gospel is not altogether the word. This is the word of God, and all things must be based upon this word. If it isn't, it isn't true. This is, but Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, he did not say teach the word. He said preach the gospel. So the gospel consists more than teaching the word. For Paul, confirming that, said the gospel came to us not in word only, but through power. Demonstrations of the Holy Spirit would come and demonstrate the gospel, bring the word to a living reality. If you just receive the word by knowing the word, that doesn't do you any good. The letter killeth, the spirit giveth life. Then you must be born again, and then the Holy Spirit quickens the word to you. In other words, like a grain of corn. If it's laying in my hand, it's just a grain of corn. It'll never be nothing else. But bury it. It comes contaminated, molds. And then it brings up another grain of corn just like it. I used to look at flowers. I just love flowers. I don't believe there's anyone who could look right at a rose or a flower and say, if he's mentally balanced right, that there is no God. For all the science in the world could make one little thing like that. All of our scientific research, they can make something looks like it, but they can't make that. No more than they can make that. They can make one looks like it out of paper, but it has got life in it. That's got life in it. That's the secret. The life. God is life. You watch the little flowers, how that the summertime, you women around here now, I noticed Sometimes passing through Jonesbury, I know she have a lot of beautiful flowers. I love that. And in the fall of the year, some of them are still young. You plant them late in the summer, and they're young, old, middle age. But when the frost comes, it's death. It kills them all. Young, old alike, bows its little head and submits itself to death. Then the petals drop off, the leaves drop off, and out there drops a little black seed. Then they have a regular funeral procession God does for the flower. He sends the fall clouds over and they cry. The rain falls down and buries the little seed underneath the ground. Then the cold winter comes, freezes it. And the pulp bursts, uh, the little seed bursts open, the pulp runs out. The ground's all froze over with ice. Well, now in the spring of the year, the flower's gone, the petal's gone, the bulb's gone, the the seed's gone, the pulp's gone, everything's gone. But that's not the end of the flower. And that warm sunshine begins to bathe up on the earth. There's a little germ of life somewhere hid away that no science can find. It reproduces the same kind of a flower that went down. If God made a way for a flower to live again, how much more he did for a man to live again? <laughs> the whole basis of Christianity is based upon the fundamental facts of resurrection. Now, if I should drop this on the floor, now to pick up this off the floor would not be resurrection. Or pick up something that looks like it wouldn't be resurrection. Resurrection is to pick up the same thing that dropped down. Now, in different parts of the world, in India and so forth, we find there are same people that they believe in God, but all they believe in that we return back an angel and we got wings and fly, but that's wrong. We're be men and women just like we are now. Now only we won't be old. Because when I look here and see an elderly man, his wife sitting here, perhaps husband and wife, they're gray. All right, a few years ago, probably a young, fine-looking man, a young lady, walked down to an altar and got married. Black hair, both of them. Fine, sturdy, young, healthy. They come from babies up to that age, about 22, 23 years old. They was at their best. Then 
begin to notice one morning when mother would come out to fix the dishes on the table for breakfast, there become little wrinkles begin to come under her and dad's eyes. Hair begin to turn gray. Dad's shoulders stooped a little. What's the matter? Death setting in. It's going to get you. It's got to get you. It may pin you many places and you get out, but finally it's going to win. It's going to take you. But then it falls like the grain of wheat when it goes into the earth. But then on the resurrection morning, when it's resurrected again, it will not be resurrected old and gray and stooped over, but it'll be just what it was before death ever struck it because all of death will be taken away from it. Isn't that wonderful? Some of us will be black-headed, some red-headed, some blondes. Brother Branham, is that? Yes, God isn't uniform. God's without form. God, look here, he makes, he makes big trees, little trees, thin trees. He makes white flowers, blue flowers. God's a God of variety. He, and he makes little people, big people, short people, thin people. That's just the way we'll be in the resurrection. And we shall know each other as we're known. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, for 20 years since being a minister of the gospel, I've tried to give this to the poor lost mortals of this world to let them know that they have eternal life right now by believing on the Son of God and accepting Him as personal Savior. So simple. Jesus said, now listen, St. John 5, 24, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath, present tense, everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation or judgment, but has passed from death unto life. I only have his word. He that eats my flesh, St. John 6, and drinks my blood, hath everlasting life, and I'll raise him up at the last days. Amen. Wonderful. That's his word. I don't know how it's going to be, but it will be. Now, I want about ten more minutes of the time. Will it be all right if I can? In the twentieth chapter of Numbers, I read these words. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the symbol together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak to the rock before their eyes, and it shall bring forth his, his is personal pronoun now, his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so that thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. Now shall we bow our heads just a moment? Our Heavenly Father, we come to Thee tonight as Thy lovely children, yet confessing that we're, we are deeply sorry for our sins. When we think of Calvary and of Jesus and what He had to do for us to redeem us, our hearts melt. Why did that lovely one have to walk Calvary, bleeding back, bloody streak all the way through the city of Jerusalem up the hill, there with nails pierced in his hand and a spear in his side to die in disgrace and shame to save us? We look to Calvary tonight and confess our wrongs. We're sorry, Lord. Forgive us of our shortcomings. But in the depths of our heart there lays happiness because that we know that we are absolutely secure in Christ Jesus. You promised Abraham you'd save him and his seed. And we being dead in Christ take on Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise by the Holy Spirit. New life. Life coming into us, making us believe the supernatural, like Abraham did, taking God at his full value, his promise. We thank thee. Now bless this people tonight. Laying here before me is a group of handkerchiefs. Bless the dear people who sent these. They read in the Bible where they're taken from the body of Paul. They believe that you're still the same Holy Spirit in the same church. 
Now, I know I'm not St. Paul the Apostle, but Jesus is still the same Lord. Bless these handkerchiefs for their intended purpose. The people that wear them, may they get well, Father. Bless us together. Heal the sick. Save the lost tonight, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. I wanted to teach some this week, but you see, when crowds are standing and so forth, it's hard. One of these days, I would like to come back to Jonesboro, go rent some big tent and seat about 10,000 people and set it out here and stay about two months so we could have a real revival. And then, if you notice how that God promised the children of Israel, he would take them out of Egypt. After 400 years they'd been down there, Joseph had been taken down, one of the patriarchs died down there, but made mention of a parting of Israel. All those patriarchs looked forward to the Word of God being fulfilled. How simple when you can just believe God's Word and take Him at what He said. Isn't it simple? Just love. If you love Him, love in your heart for God will create faith. If you love your mother real well, love your father, love your husband or your wife, it will create a faith. The love for my wife. I, when I leave her, I don't have to have... Man's always tried to do something to save himself. There's nothing you can do about it. God saves you unconditionally. He just calls you, predestinated you to be saved. And somebody's predestinated to be lost. The Bible said so. Man of old, foreordained to this condemnation. When Esau and Jacob, both born from the same parent, before either child was born, said Romans 9, not knowing good from evil, God said that the election might be sure. God said, Esau have I hated and Jacob have I loved, before either one of them done anything about it. No man can come to me except the Father draws him. You said, oh, I sought God. I went seeking for him. No, no. God sought for you, not you for God. Human nature proves that. When Adam sinned, he didn't start hunting God. He started hiding from God. And Jesus said, no man can come to me except the Father draws him. Then God draws you first. How many in here, sinner or saint, has said this? I have know that God has spoke to me trying to get me to come to His Son, Christ Jesus. Let's see your hand. Just raise your hand, sinner or saint, no matter who you are. You mean there's only about one-third of these people that ever heard God speaking to you to become a Christian? I ought to change my text and preach the gospel and call for altar call. <laughs> sure. If it isn't, no man can come to me except God the Father draws him, said Jesus. See? Now, then he that comes, I will know why it's cast down. He that comes, I'll give him everlasting life. Now, that's not just from one revival to another. That's everlasting life. Forever. Imperishable. We are so with the incorruptible seed of God, which cannot perish. Amen. See? It's incorruptible. It can't perish. And how that God made his promise, and how he brought his people. And Joseph down there, when he died, he made mention of his bones, that they shouldn't bury him there. There is a little seed here. I'd like to drop it just for a moment, if you'll bear with me. Now, this is between the lines. You know, the Bible is written, and scholars... As I heard a man on the radio this afternoon denying divine healing, said, bring me a little baby over here, let me put a scratch on its arm, let these divine healers come and make it well, then I'll believe divine healing. Oh, my. That man needs to be in the South of Packet Ward. <laughs> That's right. Well, that, I've got a child six years old would know better than that. But yet, there you are. Well, certainly... That's the same spirit that said when they put a rag around Jesus' eye and hit him on the head, said, Now you're a prophet. Tell us who, who hit you. 
the same one that said that he was hanging on the cross said, Now if you be the Son of God, come down and we'll believe it. Jesus said, I don't do nothing till the Father shows me. And when the Father shows me that I do, otherwise he didn't clown for people. This is not a stage show, vaudeville act. It's the power of God unto salvation to those who believe. Now, but let them alone. Blind lead the blind, they'll fall in the ditch. Now, Jesus said, in the Scriptures declare, that God has hid this gospel from the eyes of the wise and prudent. So you'll never know it by theology. And we'll reveal it to babes such as will learn. Is that right? So just remember it's hid from the smart people. You'll never know it. You don't know it by your theology, by education. You know it by faith. You believe it. And faith is something you can't see or know. Look at this simple little thing now, one thing here. My back there in my little old cave at Greens Mill, how many times the Holy Spirit coming down revealing things, sat there and cry. Something God making mention, hard to see. You can't see it with the natural eye. You can't look on it in the Word. Did you ever read? How many of you ever read a, a, a line from your wife? My, when I was in Africa, my wife would write me a letter. She'd say, Dear husband, I'm sitting here tonight thinking of you. I love her. When I left home, I didn't have to say, Now look, don't you, have, don't you go with nobody else. I'm your husband. And, and don't you get out of here. Don't you do that. I don't have to do that. She loves me and I love her. And I say, Goodbye, honey. Pray for me. I go on. She just knows that's, that's what she had. That's, she just does it. It's all right. I do the same thing because I love her. She loves me, so it's just a love affair. That same way this God. I just take his word and you just, we, that's just all there is to it. No matter what. See? But when she writes me a letter, she might kind of hold a little back refrain and she'll say uh, certain, certain things. But now while she's talking... I, in the letter, I'm reading that letter, but I read between the lines, too. I know what she's talking about. I can read between the lines. Now, there's a whole lot of that so in this great love story of the Bible. Read between the lines. There's a, there's a structure work. The Bible is the structure. But the Holy Spirit's building the building now. Certainly, it's got to frame together and look like this and like that and like that, but the Holy Spirit's putting it together. Just as Solomon's temple was cut out all over the world, one block was cut this way and one cut that way. When they come together, every block went right to its place without a buzz of a saw or sound of a hammer. The great church of the living God is born again, stones cut out. That's right. One of these days, persecution's going to set in a bunch of these whole indifferent ecclesiasticals will form themselves together with the Confederation Church and we'll run together, melt right together in one common thing. Notice, now, like Job when he was old, he was sitting out there and he said, his wife told him, said, Job, why don't you curse God and die the death? Said you look miserable sitting there on an ash heap, scraping himself with a piece of uh, crop, scraping his boils, broke out all over. Satan had tempted him, had put boils all over him, killed his children, took everything he had. Some people might say, like they did then, that man's a horrible sinner. But God was dealing with a saint, not with a sinner. So Job knew in his heart he hadn't sinned. So then here come his church members and sat seven days with their backs turned to him. What consolation. Days of miracles has passed, Job. But Job, he knew different. He was holding out. Then God sent Elihu down. Ella, we had in times going those names, Ella, Ella, the God representing, uh, the representative of Christ. Come and he didn't accuse Job of being a secret sinner. But he told Job, as Job noticed the trees dying and things and living again, he said, A man layeth down, he giveth up the ghost. Yea, where is he? His sons come to mourn, he perceiveth not. And Elihu says to him, in like so many words like this, 
You see, the flower never sinned. Corn and stuff, it reproduces for life here on earth. But there's coming a just one who will stand in the breach between man and God and put his hand on a sinful man and a holy God and breathes away. Then the man shall rise again. Then when Job noticed that, he raised up. Oh, I love this. Raised up, shook himself. The lightnings begin to flash, the thunders roar. A prophet got in the right line with God. Something takes place. Amen. Stood up and said, I know my Redeemer liveth. And the last days he'll stand up on the earth, though the skin worms destroys his body. Yet in my flesh shall I see God, Amen. whom I shall see for myself. My eyes shall be holding out another. Notice, prophet dying. Then let me drop a little between the line here for you just a moment. Then we'll close. I won't have time to get to the text. Notice. All right, when Job died, he specified his burial place and was buried in Palestine. The oldest book in the Bible is Job. Along came Abraham. At the Andalusian destruction and so forth, they come down out of Babylon, out of Tower of Babel, down into Shinar. There Abraham was given the promise. And then when Sarah died, Abraham's wife and sweetheart, he bought a parcel of ground. They wouldn't let him give it to him because he wanted to be sure. All right, thinkers of the Scripture, get your mind working right now. Watch this. He bought a piece of ground all in the same place where Job was buried, to bury his dead out of his sight. And Sarah was buried there. Abraham, when he died, he slept in the same tomb with Sarah. Abraham begot Isaac. When Isaac died, Isaac slept with Abraham. Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob died down in Egypt. But when he died, he said, Don't bury me down here. Take me back into Palestine and bury me. And he made Joseph put his hand on his hip where he'd limped all of his life or the biggest part of his life. Look at him there at the river. A big, strong, healthy man on this side running from God on the other side. A limping prince. Oh, my. How they said, Joseph, my son, put your hand on my hip, limping prince. And swear by God that you'll not bury me down here. Wonder why. <laughs> Tuck him up in Palestine and buried him. Joseph and he died said, Don't you bury me down here. Wonder why. <laughs> said, Take my bones and bury him up in, the, up in the promised land. Up in Palestine. Why? It's not written in the Word. It's between the lines. They were prophets. They know that what was going to take place. Along came Jesus, the one that Job saw his Redeemer. And they want to be buried the same way Job was, same place he was, same way he was. So then when Jesus came on Easter morning, when he rose from the tomb, they said, Many of the saints that slept in the dust of the earth rose and come out of the grave and entered into the city and appeared to many. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Job. What was it? Look, brother, they know there was no resurrection down in Egypt. The resurrection was in the promised land. So that's what I say today. You can call me holy or if you want to. Call me fanatic if you want to. But bury me in Jesus. For those who are in Jesus, God will bring with him the resurrection. Let them say what they want to. I mean, call fanatics anything. But those that are in Christ will God bring with him. So it makes a difference. Sure it does. Put me amongst the fanatics then. <laughs> For those that are in Christ, for well, are they fanatics? All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen. Oh, then there they are. God working with the children of Israel. When he got over there in the wilderness, bring them out. They begin to murmur. How quickly they forgot all the signs that Moses had done. How they forgot that God told him, Now, Moses, I'm sending you down there. I'm giving you two signs to perform. And when you do it, they're going to believe you. Moses said, I can't speak very good, Lord. He said, Well, I'll give you signs. And when you do these signs, they'll believe you. 
And he did the signs one time, and all Israel followed. And what was with Moses? A pillar of fire. The, I'll send my angel before you to keep you away. Not only that, but I'm going to let him be there so the people can see him. Same Holy Spirit today. Same angel of God today. Signs and wonders just exactly the same. A separated people called out on the road to a promised land, John 14. In my Father's house, many mansions, I'll come and receive you. We're on a road. Notice. And how quick they got forgot the miracles, just like the people do today, when the trials come on. Then notice again, the waters begin to dry up in the deserts and they couldn't find nothing to drink. And how quick the carnal mind would pick this up. God told Moses, go speak to the rock. Speak to the rock? Well, that's the driest place of all the dry places. How foolish the carnal mind would think. Speak to the rock? Well, that's the driest thing at rock lane. There's drier than all the rest of the desert. And if we've been everywhere and can't find water, what do you mean to get water out of that rock? That's the way you think. You say, well, that bunch of fanatics, if God is going to do anything, you... <laughs> Driest place it looks, but God did it anyhow. And he spake to the rock, and the rock brought its waters, saved the perishing people. And today that rock is Christ Jesus that was smitten for you. Speak to him. Maybe you've been everywhere. Maybe you've tried everything. But tonight, speak to the rock. It'll bring forth its waters for salvation or healing for all that you have need of. You believe this? May the Lord add his blessings to you. While we bow our heads in a moment of prayer, while Sister Reed or some of them will come to the piano or the organ, rather. <clears throat> Oh, my, tonight, if we were looking to see Jesus, you know that old song, I want to see Jesus, don't you? Well, now, he's with us. What will it be when we see him? He said, a little while in the world will see me no more. But yet you'll see me. I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. How wonderful. Now have faith. Believe with all your heart. Now if he's here tonight, his spirit will be working with his people. I'll be with you. The Bible said when the Holy Ghost has come, he will bring these things to your memory that I've taught and will show you things to come. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. I hear, and now someday, the Jesus that's working through these poor little dim lights that we are, as a little lamplight upside of a big million watt light he would be, but these little lights, let's let them show to the world, as his power is working through us, someday he'll come in a visible body form. We shall see him now. Father, needy people sitting here, needy of God, needy of salvation, needy of the Holy Spirit, needy in their bodies, thy word is truth, O Lord. Now the word without the Spirit is dead. But germatize that word with the Spirit tonight, and may it bring forth a hundredfold. If you were standing here tonight, you would say to us, I can do nothing except my Father will show me. You know what these people are thinking about out there. The Bible said you perceive their thoughts. You know where there's a fish that had a coin in his mouth. Certainly the Father told you when he got up there that... Have Peter go down and catch a fish. You just told him. For you said yourself, Lord, that you didn't do nothing until the Father showed you. When the Father shows me, then I work hitherto. How simple. 
how the unbelievers rose up in that day and said, let him do this, let him heal all that Bethesda, let him do this or that, and we'll believe him. Come down off the cross, tell us who hits you on the head. No, you only done what the Father told you. And you said, the things that I do, you will also, and if they call the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call you? But blessed are you when you're persecuted for righteousness. Bless this little church tonight. You, you knew the woman's sins. You know different things. You know where there's some mules hitched one day. Where two ways met. I pray, God, tonight that you'll come in your power. And may the Son of God come in the Holy Spirit form and anoint everyone here. And may the Holy Spirit anoint your servant, Lord, that the power and the Word of God might be fulfilled. When we see you walking on the shores of Galilee and through the city streets, you could only do as the Father said do. And may we work the will of God tonight by doing what the Father says do. Bless the people everywhere, heal the sick. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. You want to. <clears throat> the boy give out prayer cards this afternoon in the building here. And he give them out to people. You, one to a hundred. We're certainly squeezed for room tonight. <clears throat> but let's see if we can have about about Fifteen of those we've been taking about fifteen at a time. See if we'd have about fifteen of them stand up here. Start with fifty. You fifty to that'd be fifty and ten sixty sixty five. From you fifty to you sixty five, stand first. Now turn the card over. Look at your neighbor's card if he's got one, because he might be deaf and can't hear. You'd have to bring him up to the platform if he's holding those cards. And if he's laying on a cot stretcher somewhere, well, you just look at it. And then when his card number's called, you just come wave your hand like that, one of the ushers. And then when his number's called, I will ask the Father here to speak to the person out there. And now, line up here to my right, if you will. You, one, I imagine you're scattered all through the building because they're just... Uh, you, uh, 50. Who's got you 50. U50 or U51, 52, 53, 54, 55, on up to about 60 or 65. Let them stand first, if you will, right up here to the right, if you will, for the prayer line. Now, how many in here is sick and needy and wants to be prayed for and does not have a prayer card, wants to be prayed for? Raise your hands like this. All over the building, it's a solid mass everywhere. Well, now look and listen to me now. Your faith I challenge in the name of the Lord Jesus. You look this way and believe the story that I've told is the truth. And see if the Heavenly Father doesn't re speak right out to the audience and get you. Every person in here can be healed tonight. There's no need of... If you could only understand, I, Brother Reed and them speaks about how to receive healing, I suppose, and things before I get here, and the great fundamentals of divine healing. Now, this is, our, our group is broke up. Brother Bosworth's in Durban, South Africa, getting ready for the meeting, setting the international committee together. We was there a few months ago and had 30,000 converts in one of altar call. Durban, South Africa. Then we're going to India. Baron von Bondenberg, a baron of Germany, which is one of our managers, leaves the 15th to go to make a dinner with Nehru in India. I have a little dinner with Nehru. Then we come back to have a dinner with the king of Trench Jordan. And we go into the Mohammeds, then to the Palestine. 
to the Jew. Oh, I just have a vision here. Throw it out. God's going to give thousands of souls to his son during that time. Will you pray for me? And remember, at the great day of the judgment, your prayers will be counted just as much in that revival as my efforts to be to go bring it. We're co-workers together in Christ Jesus. Is that right? Your prayers. Remember Dwight Moody, what he said when he was converted down there? That little old washwoman been praying for him? Who got the credit? The washwoman. She's the one who led Moody to Christ. John Smith, Calvin Knox, many of the great reformers all come by prayer. Now, while they're getting the lines lined up, wonder if we could stand just for a moment, kind of a change of posture, and just sing only belief, if you will. Let's sing now, everybody together now. Oh, it like this with her hands up. How many believe that Jesus, the Son of the living God, has promised to be with His church, even in His church, to the end of the world? Well, if He's here tonight, as He promised, as has been scientifically proven, also not only that, but in the meeting, He'll do just what He did back there. Is that right? Now, He said, St. John 5, that he couldn't do nothing. They just question him, I suppose, about why he didn't heal all those people. See him pass through the pool of Bethesda? I was noticing him checking the prayer cards here, these twisted and afflicted laying here. Don't be weary. Now, if uh, some unbeliever come by and say, heal that man that's crippled up, twisted up, then I'll believe it. Look at Jesus going through the pool of Bethesda where the lame, halt, blind, and withered was laying. Never healed a one of them. Walked right by every one of them, full of love and virtue. Is that right? And walked over to a man laying on a pallet. And said, for Jesus knew he was laying there. The Father had showed him. And he healed that man. Went away. And the Jews questioned him. He said, I can do nothing except the Father shows me. And whatever the Father shows me, that I do. Is that right? Now, he's the same Jesus tonight. Is that right? Now, let's believe it and raise up our hands and say, Now I believe. Come on now. Now. send your spirit tonight and bless us together as we wait on thee for the farther part of the service. In the beloved name of Jesus, thy son, we ask thee. Amen.
<clears throat> of course, anyone's aware now. I want you to understand this. That your brother here doesn't claim to be a healer. I am no healer. No other man's a healer. God is the healer. Jesus didn't claim to be a healer. He said, It's not me that doeth the works. It's my Father dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. See? So if he didn't claim to be a divine healer, why should I or any other man? We're not. We can't. If you're honest, you're not. There's nothing in me or any other man could heal you. That's to come from God. The only thing, we, we have gifts that we can point to God for what he's already done for you. He saved every sinner in here now. He saved you 1,900 years ago. If you'll accept it tonight, you'll have pardon and grace. He healed you 1,900 years ago when he was striped on his back. If you'll accept it, you have healing. The only thing we can do is preach or have a vindication of his presence by divine gifts. May the Lord grant the blessing. Now, I wish that you would be just as reverent as you can for a few moments. I don't blame you for rejoicing, but in this kind of... It's a very solemn affair. So just be as reverent as you can. Be in prayer. You can watch me, but be in prayer. Lest I tell you, put your head down. Then when you do, if something takes place, sometimes like epilepsy, it's very hard to deal with. And the thing will just carry on. Sometimes it throws the patient into spells, and I've just seen everything take place. Now, when I ask you to do that, then you keep your head bowed. And it's keeping prayer. Surely Christians know how to hold on to God in that hour. All right. Now let's see. Are your light lines ready? Now to him it's operating this thing. As the meetings go on each night, the anointing begins to get very deep. If you understand, you break into another dimension. See? Sometimes I don't know how loud I'm talking. Just imagine standing here now talking and something that happened back under 40 years ago and in spirit I'm back there with them where that's happening. And knowing I'm talking, don't know where my voice is. I know I'm supposed to be here in this tabernacle or will. I am here, but yet I got her somewhere. You don't know what a feeling it gives. It's no wonder Daniel said he was troubled at his head and different things taking place. See, just like, how many in here ever dreamed a dream? Now, you couldn't dream a dream. I tell you, dream me a dream. You couldn't do it. Now, that's your subconscious. When an ordinary person dreams, for his subconscious is about that far from him. When this conscious becomes inactive, this and takes sets up. And how many remembers things that you dreamed years ago? Well, what caused you to remember it? You were somewhere in some kind of a condition, wasn't you? Because you still remember it when this conscience becomes active. Well, now, some people doesn't dream at all. Their subconscious would be way back, like to that wall. Now, a person, you can't make yourself what you are. I believe that gifts and callings are without repentance. God gives them sovereignly as he will. God, you couldn't come to God unless God called you. It's God who calls you, God who gives you, God who puts you in the church, God who does everything. And in him rest all in all. As scriptural as it can be. And you know that's right. But now look, a seer, his subconscious is not back there. Neither is it here. It's right here. You don't go to sleep. You just break from one into the other. From one into the other. And when you just let it alone, it comes at its own leisure. It isn't. But here it's just like raising up, looking through a knot hole to see something. You're praying. You're taking up a parable, which is words that God gave me alone to know. And you keep this repeating. Then you break and you see the person as you're contacting him. It gets your spirit. It goes to them. Then you just see something happen. Maybe it'll close off. Maybe you look again. You'll see something else that'll close off. Well, now, when God gives it just as his leisure, he just looks like raising you up over the fence and lets you see the whole thing. What it's all about. Now, be in prayer. I want to talk to the woman, and everyone be real reverent now. And you watch me. Don't get too tired of me. 
Now, up here, you people up here, this is the first time in years that I've ever tried to work with people sitting behind me. See, you are spirits too. Did you know that? You are every person in here is a spirit and a natural. So your spirits, you're actually looking this way, and you feel it 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 this way. How many has been in our big meetings, out somewhere else where we have big meetings? You know we don't have that, do we? No, there's no one around the platform, no one at all, just myself. Maybe the manager or somebody, so ushers helping them up the platform or something. But there's nobody there. I catch that person individually. Now I hear maybe me talking to this woman. Maybe somebody's real high faith out of your eyes. You'll throw a vision before me here, and I'm talking to this woman, yet means that woman over there. But so far, and all the time, God has never failed to let me be straightened out on it. So I, I believe he'll. He's never failed. It's never failed one time since I've been born. Not one time. I asked anybody to look that up. And not one thing has it ever predicted, but what comes just exactly the way it does. Now, because the people are prayed for here, that don't mean they're healed. No. No. When you hear that spirit move and say, Thus saith the Lord, then, then you watch what it says. I just pray for the person. It's just something to stimulate their faith. But you watch. I've noticed when my boys told me, Mr. Ryan and them, that several times on the platform it spoke directly to the person and told them just what was going to happen. When it does that, you mark that down or get it off the tape in there. Watch what happens. I'll put my life to it. It'll be just exactly what it says. If one say it, here it say, it's thus saith the Lord. But if I'm just praying, I'm just praying like I pray for you or someone or any persons out there where it would take place. Now, I want you all to be in. It just, you don't have to uh, bow your head, but just, just keep reverent and keep praying if you will. Now, little lady, I wish you'd stand around this way, if you will, sister. No, like here. Just uh, stand right like this and look right. That's it. Now, I, I like for you to do that because it kind of gives more of an opening that way than it does back here. <laughs> now, I suppose that you and I are, are strangers. I don't remember you. What is your name? Slaughter. Slaughter. Well, I'm glad to meet you, sister. And I, I trust that God will do something for you tonight that will help you. I don't know why you're up here. I don't know nothing about you. I've never seen you in my life. But God knows you, doesn't he? He knows you. You're conscious that something's going on now, see. But that's not nothing to hurt you. Now, if you'll watch the patient, a real sincere patient, quickly, now, this woman is a believer. See, the Spirit's already caught me, and it caught her, too. Now, I don't know her, but you, let's see if this isn't true. You're aware that something's going on. Isn't that right, sister? If that is, raise up your hand. So. That's right. Now, the angel of the Lord, which you see on this picture, is right here now. Now, just be real reverent. Now, we'll see what he says. Now, he has to use the human voice. He uses human eyes. Now, if he, that light there, that, that bulb would say to that little window glass out there, look here what I can do. I can light up at nighttime. No, it can. It's the current that lights it up. It was made a light bulb, but that window gives light also from the sun. See? So neither one of them can say, look what I am. It's the light that shines through them. See? So no one can say, who am I? It's who is he? See? He, the lovely one. Well, now, <clears throat> a sister, I wanted just to talk with you just a little bit, you being the first patient. <clears throat> and I... I guess you think that I dread that, but I, I don't. See, it's just the anointing of the Spirit catching you away first. You see what I mean? But you know that He's close and near. And it's His presence. It's His presence that does these things. And then He's the only one who can help you or I, either one. But now you as a Christian sister and me as your Christian brother, and God is our Father who looks over both of us. Now, He knows you. He knows me. I don't know you, nor you don't know me. But He knows us both. Now, there's something wrong with you, and He sent me to help you to believe in Him. See? Now, that's, that's, now, if He will do that, will you accept Him? I just wonder. I, I'm doing this for a cause, lady. 
Now, you are you have been sick for some time. I know that. Suppose I see a long dark streak moving from you now. Yes, you've been very. You have heart trouble. Uh, you have a leaking of the heart. Isn't that right? The doctors hasn't even give you hope. They say you can't live but a little while. Is that right? You, oh, they told you that. Is that true now? They said they didn't know just how long I could live, but I couldn't live if I done it. Yes. Yes. I see it. Kind of a heavy-looking fellow talking there, speaking. It left me. That was a vision. You're... There's something else that you're trying, you got on your mind. You're thinking about somebody. Something that, oh yes, you got some friends here tonight too that you want to see get healed. Isn't that right? You have a, a lady friend that you're think. No, it, it's it's her husband that you're concerned about. And the man's uh, the man's had a stroke or something. Isn't that right? And isn't he a minister? Yes. A preacher? Yes. He's had a stroke. And you're, you're been, you've been worried about and thinking of him. That's the man laying right there. Aren't you a minister, sir? His face was pulling, that's so I could tell you. He was looking down at him, that's probably how I caught that. Well, let's pray. Lord Jesus, bless them all. Thou knowest all things. And may the woman be healed. May the minister get well, Lord. Bless your servant there. Heal his body. Let him come out of the stroke. And preach the gospel again from the platform for the glory of God in Jesus' name. As you go down, lay your hand upon the minister as you go down. Let's say thanks be to God. My reverend brother, that's right. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may God heal the man. Does he, he doesn't have a prayer card, does he? He has, well, that's, you don't have, that's okay. <clears throat> now, everyone, reverend, please now, and be in prayer. You believe the Holy Spirit is here? And it's bothering one of your lungs also. The, the, the doctors don't know what's the matter with you. Your doctor told you he didn't know what was wrong with you. Isn't that right? Right there in the room that day. You know what I'm talking when you're standing there. And did they move the gallbladder? I see them taking something out of the place. Isn't that right? They did. Well, God knows what's wrong with you. Do you believe by asking he'll let you get well? Come here, sister. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Bless this child that comes, Lord, humbly. I pray that you'll heal her. May she go out of this building tonight happy, rejoicing. Cursed be this disease of her body. And may it go from her. In Jesus Christ's name, I ask it for the glory and praises of God. Amen. God bless you, sister. Go rejoice. Have faith in God. Uh, just a moment. There's another person ready for an operation right here. 
It's a, it's a young lady. She's got varicose veins in her legs, I believe, and she's ready for an operation. God bless you, young lady. Is that true? Have faith in God. Would you stand up again just a moment? Isn't those veins on your limb between here and there? They're quite veins. I, you're, it's serious. You accept your healing now of Jesus Christ. Why would he show me you and you sitting way back in that audience there? It wasn't. Have faith in God. The same God who knew where a fish was and had a coin in his mouth knew where you were sitting. God bless you, young lady. May you get well and serve God all your days. Bless God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. God shall bring it to pass. How do you do, sir? Do you believe me to be God's prophet? If our Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever, sir, he's always full of mercy and full of compassion for those who will believe on his name. And I trust that you do that, sir. What is your name, sir? Chapel. It's your chapel. I'm glad to meet you. May the Lord bless you. Yes, sir. You're a very sick man. You have a, a rare blood disease. Isn't that right? It's it's tumorous condition of the cells of the blood, I believe, but I understood in the vision what the doctor said. Isn't that right? And also, my friend, you need Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Isn't that right? You're a sinner. Will you accept him now? No, you've tried several times, but you just haven't got to that place where you're... Will you accept him now? If you will, raise your hand. Almighty God, author of life, giver of every gift, send thy blessings upon the man, healing, Lord, don't let him die with him. Let him go, Lord, and be healed and full of the Holy Ghost. May it come up on him and may he be a saved man to save others from a life of sin. Grant it, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name, I ask. If God who knew your heart, my brother, knows all about you, go in peace now and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and be made well. God bless you. You keep praying, don't you, lady? You have Katara the head, don't you, lady? Isn't that right? All right, stand up and accept your healing now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Some kind of a running, it comes from your head. The doctor told you it's Katara. Have faith now, it'll go away from you. You believing out there, all of you? That lady sitting way back there at the end of that row, would you like to get over that, uh, that uh, asthma, sister? Like get over the asthma condition sitting back there? If you do, you can raise up. God bless you. Go home now and be well. I meant the lady back there. That's right. If you won't accept it the same way, the Lord bless you. How do you do, lady? You believe? Now, as those people out in the audience there, but we're standing side by side. 
Do you believe that His presence is here? Do you believe the Holy Spirit is here at the platform? If it is, and I'll be God's prophet, your life you couldn't hide. If there's anything wrong with you, God will let me know. But if you're here just as a deceiver, God will let me know. But you're not here. You're a Christian. And you've got tumors. Them tumors is in your side. Is that right? You seem to have a sad heart about something. Yes. Is someone else you're interested in? Is that a little boy, a little child about seven or eight years old, and he has a uh, rheumatic fever? Is that right? Come here. God bless this woman and her little boy, and may they both be made well as I bless them. May they go in the name of the Lord Jesus and be made well for the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Have faith in God. You want to get over that asthma sitting back there, lady, with that little check address on here in front? Looking at me like that? If you want to get over it, you may if you want to accept your healing, the lady next to you there. You have an asthmatic condition, don't you? Just raise up and say, I accept my healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you now. Go home and get well. Mister, you have heart trouble sitting right there, don't you? You've been praying. You were sitting there praying for me to call you next, wasn't you? God revealed your prayer to me. Stand up and accept your healing, my brother. I challenge anybody to pray and believe. Have faith in God. A fellow sitting there at the end of the road there, sitting there, sub with arthritis, sitting right out there. There the Lord sitting next to him has high blood pressure. Is that right? Rise and be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus, except your healing. God bless you, lady. That lady sitting right back there with anemia, anemia condition sitting right there. Raise up, sister. The Lord makes you well now. You can go home and be made well. Have faith in God. Way back in the audience, pray. All spirits now is subject to me through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit takes over every spirit in here. Nothing can be here. Bring the ladies. How do you do, lady? Are you well aware that you're standing in His presence? You've got a, some kind of a female disorder. It's a cancer. And that cancer's on the womb. Isn't that right? I see it looks like a table. You're walking away from a table refusing food. You've got a stomach trouble. Is that right? You believe if I'll ask, you believe I'm a believer? Well, he said, if they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. You believe that? Come here then. Oh God, laying hands on the woman in the name of Jesus, may she go be healed. Don't doubt. Believe with all your soul that was within you. How to do? You want to get over heart trouble? Well, accept your healing, then go on out rejoicing and saying, "Thank you, Lord Jesus." Glory, hallelujah! Praise God. 
All right. Come, lady. Have faith now. If this audience could only see. Look here, lady. Do you believe me to be his prophet? Do you believe if God would tell me what was wrong with you, you'd have faith enough in him that the Lord, he'd stand here and I've told the truth. And he has already healed you. You believe that, don't you? You've been suffering with a stomach trouble, haven't you? Now go eat what you want to if you believe. Have faith in God. How do you do? You believe? You're going to get a little heart trouble. He made well? All right, then go and believe God. I'll lay hands up on you in the name of my Lord, Jesus Christ. That you believe. God bless you. Have faith. Don't doubt nothing. All things are possible to them that believe. the angel of the Lord stopped right oh it's that lady sitting there you lady with heart trouble you will be made well lady all right God bless you I thought it was a little girl but it was hanging to the lady have high blood pressure, don't you, sir, sitting right back behind her there. Your wife has a trouble with her breathing. Looks like her breathing doesn't come and go right. Isn't that true? Art, you won't accept your healing? Then stand up. Be made well to both of you. What you need is faith. Looks like I see some colored people standing back there. How many of you is there back there? How many? About three. Stand up on your feet. Jesus Christ died for you. Look this way. Do you believe me to be his prophet? I can't heal you. But Jesus Christ has healed you when he died at Calvary. Do you believe if God will reveal to me what you are and who you are and where you are or something about you that you'll accept your healing? The man to the left doesn't have nothing hardly wrong with him. He's a pretty healthy man. The one in the middle has heart trouble. Or no, he's blind. That man's blind. And this woman next to her has heart trouble. Is that right? If that's right, raise up your hands. Then the rest of that, then go home and be made well in the name of the Lord Jesus. Have faith. Come later. And may she go home and be all together well, I pray in Jesus Christ. Bless you. And you go believe me, you go believe me, and I'll take her well. If there's anything I could do to help the little thing, we just have faith now, God's going to make her well. Born that way. Just keep believing. Come, my little boy. Your Bless his little heart. He's got heart trouble. God, be merciful to this dear little boy. May your spirit come up on him now and may he be made completely whole. I pray in Jesus Christ's name. God bless you, honey. You're going to get well now, aren't you? You love Jesus? God bless your little heart. Very sweet little boy. Now you go and love the Lord. You're going to get all right. Don't worry, parent of the child. The baby will be all right. God accepted his little faith and he's going to. Oh, how wonderful. The Lord Jesus is here to make every one of you whole. 
You believe it? <laughs> Dad, of course, to see your own a king. Anyone can see that, that you're on a king, but I I can't make you whole, but God can make you whole. You believe, brother? You accept your healing? Well, just go say, thank you, Lord. You heal me. Go ahead. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Come. Poor old mother. Do you believe, mother? If I wouldn't even tell you what was wrong with you, you'd still believe anyhow, would you? Well, go eat what you want to now, if you want to. Your stomach trouble has left you. God bless you. Have faith in God. Come, lady. You want to get over that heart trouble? Go say thank you, Lord, for healing me today. What about you, lady? Do you believe? Too virtuous, but go believe and you'll get well. Just a minute. Something screamed from the audience. Just a minute, lady. You've had this quite a while, haven't you? Don't look at you just a minute. Life is so. They've done all they can do, but it's retired. Yet you want to be well, don't you? The Lord Jesus bless you now. Go and be made well. May the Lord be made well. You believe, sir? Your troubles in your up in here, like a scientist or something. Isn't that right? Say, aren't you a minister of the gospel? I see the pulpit come before us. Go, brother, and be made well in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sir, laying you on a con, you suffer TB too, don't you? Isn't that right? When that woman is healed a while ago, God touched your body. Won't you stand up from there and go on home and get well? You believe? Well, then stand up. Go out of the building. If you have faith and believe, you can go stand up and go home and be made well. If you don't, that's your chance. You'll never go. Do you believe in this building? All of you just now, the Lord Jesus Christ is sure to make well, make whole, to heal every person in divine presence? If you do, I want you to do something for me. I want you to look this way now. Put your hands over on one another just a moment. All the sick and the needy, lay your hands on each other. I tell you, you might not want to believe me, but there's dozens of you healed right now. I've seen something happen. You're anointed with the Holy Spirit now, and the gift of God is in the building. Oh God, thou who can make evil spirits leave, have mercy upon this audience of people tonight. Send thy Holy Spirit, rebuke every foul, unbelieving spirit. May the devil leave every one of these sick people. 